The views and opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect the policies and the position of Now You Know. Good evening and welcome to Viewpoint. Together with experts and newsmakers, we'll make sense of the week's biggest issues and stories. I'm Barnaby Lowe, in tonight's conversation. A celebrity couple's daughter, now carving a path of her own. In recent weeks, 19-year-old Frankie Pangilinan, one of Senator Francis Pangilinan and megastar Sharon Cuneta's children, has been making headlines with her outspokenness on social media about various current and social issues. Kaki has, inadvertently or otherwise, taken on an advocacy against rape and a culture of victim blaming around it. Hashtag Ihako, which she initiated, trended for a while after a row with broadcaster Ben Tulfo. So tonight we have live via Skype, none other than Frankie Pangalinan, and she was uh, she was just laughing because she flipped her camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so thank you so much, Frankie. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank, thank you for, you for me. Thank you for downloading Skype. That was really <laughs> funny. That that tweet earlier. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, I had I have naman Skype, so it wasn't like I know I just didn't have it on this current device. So I was like, okay, I'll get Skype, I'll get Skype for you guys. So yeah, oh. thank you so much for having me. So that you a lot. <laughs> you have a Skype account, you just didn't have the, the app on that. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> appreciate it. We really oh do. I think it yeah. means a lot that I'm able to be here with you guys. Like, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I mean, you know, there's there's really a lot. To cover, um, you know, I have like five pages of notes here, and oh I, I interviewed uh, <laughs> Maria Ressa like a uh, couple of weeks ago, and I had four pages. So there's really what? a lot. Wait, oh. okay, okay, that's, uh, <laughs> hold on. I don't, I don't believe. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But um, maybe let's start with uh, the kind of the advocacy that you started. I mean, I think it might have been inadvertent on your part, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this hashtag, Iyako, uh, I think a lot of people already know about it. A lot of people are aware how it came about, but maybe for the benefit of those watching us who might not be aware exactly how it came about, um, maybe let's uh, refresh their memory. Okay, so I think um, first, of, like the first, Segura, like the first, wave of it was um I saw this tweet by Rappler fitting Maria Reza. I saw this tweet um which is they basically they published this article that was out outlining how a Lukban police station published a post on Facebook, I believe, that was um it was really poorly phrased as well. Like I felt like it was really unprofessional and like it bothered to the extent that that's that's an authority figure like that's the establishment that we go to in order to feel safe and secure right like that's the, the police you go there so that you're you know that your rights are being protected and you know that that's where you go when you feel violated or when you feel like and things like that and so for them to make a post that was like kayo naman mga girls wag naman kayong sumuot na mga short shorts that's exactly what it said i think and so i it just irked me like to my very core because i just felt like this is so wrong because that's a place like I said, that's a place where we go to feel safe. Like that's that's number one. Th- those are the people who you would go to if you were assaulted, right? Like that's who you're expected right. to go to. And it's like, you know, so I felt like I had to comment on that. So I quote tweeted that and I just said, stop teaching women how to dress and start teaching people not to rape. And I felt like that tweet, you know, it, it kind of went on its own. I'm not the first person to have said that. And I know that. And it's like, I just kind of wanted to reinforce it because I can't believe or I mean, I can believe, but I don't want to believe that people still believe in like that, you know. And so it it garnered some it garnered some reactions and like it got some retweets and some likes and things and some support already. And I thought that was it. I thought that like mm-hmm. that was. I I but later, saw that tweet and I I also thought that that was it. But then yeah yeah, yeah go right? ahead. You thought yeah it's like you think that that's because I I felt like it was kind of like 
I don't know. To me, it was just kind of like a, it, it was a principle thing. It's not, you know, I didn't think it was like arguable or I didn't think it was, you know, I just thought, hey, like, let's start changing the culture. You know what I mean? And it wasn't really like targeted towards anyone. And I know that there are a lot of people who sh shared my perspective. So when I made that tweet, it just, yeah, like there were people who like were, you know, agreeing and things like that. And so I was like, okay, that's good. Like at least like kind of getting like the mood for it. Right. But then later that night, I wasn't able to see it that night now, actually. But later that night, um, Ben Tulfo responded and it was, I, I only saw it the next morning, but I think what made me, I'm what grateful. urged me to, re yeah, you know, I think it just made me like, I kind of had the urge to respond back because it was like, it's, he said Iha and then he tagged me. So it wasn't like, I was kind of like, wait, I'm not the only one who believes this, right? Like this is like, a, I thought this was kind of like a cultural shift that we're all kind of inclined towards, right? Like that, that our culture is bad. Mm -hmm. Was that offensive, him calling you Iha? I, I mean, that's the was, one that you picked up yeah, on. Yeah, it was I think that people need to realize also because a lot of people, like their point of view is like, oh, he's just a concerned Tito or he's just like a concerned like, you know, like a concerned Tito figure. And the thing is, I don't know him. Like, I think people don't, you know, people assume that, like, I, I don't know, because my mom is friends with this brother, um, but I'm, he's not close to my parents. I don't know him. I've never, ever met him, like, a single time. And so to be called, like, Iha and then singled out like that in such a way, I felt like it was so, like, out of, you, you know what I mean? Like, out of bounds. Like, why are you only responding to me when there's clearly so many people who agree with the point, right? There's clearly, and I figured, I felt also, like, the same kind of, like urge to like respond again like to the Lukban police thing because he's a public figure you know and I figured like public figure shouldn't so, be like it was kind of irresponsible I think for someone with such a do you mind, uh, like, do you mind if I read his tweet go do ahead you mind if I read his tweet? yeah so he says okay. Iha a rapist or a juvenile sex offender's desire to commit a crime will always be there so all they need is an opportunity to commit the crime so sexy ladies uh, be careful with the way you dress up. Yeah. I just think so that the nuances... Felt that the nuances a lot of that was so, wrong. Yeah, the nuances were, were just very much... I felt like it was just irresponsibly composed, for a public figure especially. And I felt the need to respond because there were people also tagging me in it and going like, hey, this isn't okay, right? And I was like, yeah, that's not okay. Because I think that all, his point of view applies perhaps only on a case basis as the culture currently is but my reaction to it was can we change the culture you know like bigger picture stuff and I think that he recognized that as well because on a, on his Facebook he was much braver on Facebook actually I just wasn't able to respond because I don't have a Facebook and so you know he was much braver on Facebook he actually headlined it but like the smart like the wannabe smart Alec like child and then it was much longer and much more like derogatory and stuff again and I didn't realize that until people sent it to me also like hey he said some stuff about you on Facebook right and I was like that's even more not okay and I think that for me it was just like the driving reactor like for me or like the catalyst for like my own reaction was just kind of I need to I, you know there has to be a response to this because this is not like that's a public figure who's promoting and normalizing the culture that I like I was trying to say we need to change and I think that fundamentally we do need to change it rape is wrong period right and it's like you can't argue with that but, but then it didn't stop there. I yeah. mean, I at that point, I, I personally also thought that, you know, it would end with uh, what should, I mean, what word would I use? Tiff, you know, that tiff between yeah, yeah. you and, and Ben Tulfo. But then, you know, people then started commenting. And then there was this one particular comment from a man, which who we now know is based in, in, in the UK. And that yeah. got your, your mom really mad. Mm -hmm. the thing is okay truth be told i've been getting those threats for a really long time like for the last two years every single day i'll get a death or a rape threat or something like i'll hurt you you know what i mean and it's like to me it was kind of, I, I felt like given given like everything that just happened i think i decided to call out that particular comment all, like mostly fueled by the fact that it was so like it was extra vile i think like it was just in nature it was a, it, it was a little more vile than the others and, you know, but also because I felt like I was doing my part in normalizing the culture that I was trying to fight against by staying silent about those things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, while I can't, while I don't have the bravery yet to tell my own Iha Ako story, like, while I don't have my bravery yet to tell my own personal, like, Iha Ako story, I don't think that this, these, like, these comments should be normalized as well. And so I decided to just call it out. 
Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. to be fair, I did not expect that my mom would. <laughs> I did not expect that my mom would uh would catch on to that. And I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did I did I lose you or did yeah, you lose you me? Yeah, you paused. You paused for like a for like a little bit. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, okay. okay. I didn't hear your response. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So um, what was I saying? Yeah. So I was asking um, if you felt that that was a real threat to to rape you, or if you thought that that was just a vile comment, because your mom, your yeah. mom obviously thought that that was a threat, and she took it seriously. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is, to me, I don't. Either way, I don't think it's acceptable, you know? It's like, it doesn't matter. Like, I, I know that a lot of people were trying to tell me, like, it's like you shouldn't have done anything because you're out of reach and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's not the point. The point is that the conversation is still going around there. Like, this kind of discourse is still, like, it's accepted and, like, it can just go by. You know what I mean? Like, that's not okay. And that's part of it. I thought like that that's part of the culture. Even though it wouldn't be a realistic prospect for him to actually rape me or to, like, actually assault me, that doesn't mean that, you know, there's so like there's so many more vulnerable women out there, and so many more women who are not as privileged as I am in this position, who don't have my my security, who don't have my like you know what I mean, like in my circumstance in life, who I have to fight for, who who are who are who fall victim exactly because of like this kind of discourse, because this kind of discourse is never called out, like no one is ever like, hey, that's wrong, like because it's left alone, these people are left thinking that that's okay, like it's okay to joke about, you know, it's like like these things it might seem small in comparison to like bigger to to bigger cases and it obviously is but the thing is that this kind of discourse is what leads to those cases i think so since you already talked about privilege right you said that uh, you do think that you are speaking from a position of privilege um what about the the, the case that uh, your mom wanted to file because you you did tweet as well that uh, you're you're thinking about maybe not filing uh, that case because yeah. there are I'm, I'm still cases thinking about it. at yeah. the end. Yeah. So okay. So you're still thinking about it. Yeah, I'm still thinking about it because I think that it didn't it didn't it honestly didn't um come to my attention. Like I didn't read na many of her follow up posts because I was kind of I was actually very uncomfortable by the fact that a lot of it was kind of being publicized, you know? I felt, I feel like as a mother though, like I, I'm not judging my mom. The thing is, I think people need to recognize we're separate people. And I feel like as a mother, I would feel the same feelings. I would feel the same rage if like, you know, my, my own child would like, I'm not a mother yet, but I just mean like when I am a mom, like I would react the same, albeit perhaps most likely not on such like a public scale, on like such a public platform. And so like, I, I'll admit, like I was very, I was made very un by the fact that it was very loud and very bold but I think that at the end of the day it's like for me it, so like now it's like I have this kind of choice to make where it's either I don't file and it's like okay well then I don't I don't risk like my take my case taking precedence over anyone else's like I don't risk like my case being highlighted but the thing is also I think it came to my attention like in the past few days that the DOJ has already done their own work for that and things and um, but at the same time, I don't that's like, I guess, I don't know, it's still difficult for me to think about because at the same time, I want to set an example and I want, want an example and say this isn't tolerable, like we shouldn't tolerate this anymore. You know, I feel like we've been tolerant for so long. I've been tolerant for so long. Like I said, I've been getting these comments and messages like nonstop for like the last couple of years. And I think that even before the conversation, even before Ihako, I've been getting messages like this, like nonstop. And I was just kind of ignoring it and trying to be like, okay, like, you know, but the truth is those people are still out there. Like, even if they can't touch me directly, they could hurt anybody else. And I don't want to, you know, it's like, I don't want to look not necessarily weak, but I just, I want to set that example where we need to start fighting back for for our rights. And we need to start fighting back for like our own safety and security. And we, this kind of behavior shouldn't be tolerated anymore. So have you actually had a talk with your parents about this? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it just looks like your mom has her own plans, you know, about what she wants to do. Yeah. And then you, you know, talking about it separately as well. Yeah. Um, but as a family, have you talked about this? Yeah, we actually, th- we talk about, that's the thing, my family every night, it's always family dinner. Like, you have to talk about everything on the table. And I think the past couple of days obviously have been this, this exact. And I think that it's it's important for me to get their support. But at the same time, 
it's important to them that like I do what I'm comfortable with. So we're trying to find like a good balance there. And we're trying to, that we've been discussing options and we've been discussing like what, like the possibilities and like what we can do. You know what I mean? Like there's so many, there, there's honestly many ways to pursue a case. It's not just, it's it's not just like one one straightforward way of like him getting. And the, the truth is, I don't want anything more from him than a potential apology and maybe like a like a symbolic peso or something just for all of the women who you know have to deal with that kind of conversation for like on the daily and i think that i'm still deciding like i said it's not really something i'm comfortable with if if i find that my case would like undermine other cases like much more like dire cases but the truth is that if they've already because the doj i think also said that they found another guy right and i was like okay well i didn't even file a case yet and you already started investigating which i felt kind of uneasy about but at the same time if it's done already it is high lang, if like i don't go and like if i don't do something about it it's like well, that that's was the also secretary you could be your mom's lawyer i think yeah. yeah i think his firm is still her lawyer uh like her for her his firm still represents her i mean yeah Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, but that's the thing. It's you, like, I don't know. It makes me yeah. uncomfortable to think about uh, the connection. <laughs> like, yeah, but how do you feel about you know your parents being maybe I shouldn't say dragged into it, but you know I- involved yeah. in this whole controversy because you know their names are are brought up whether or not whether or not your mom actually reacted, but their names were already brought up yeah. in you know all of this, uh, especially your dad because that last comment that you reacted on uh, actually picked up on his uh, Juvenile Justice Act. Yeah. So, I mean, you said, you said you understand your mom's reaction, but what about you? How do you feel about, you know, your parents being brought up in, in, in all of this? I mean, I think that first and, for, first and foremost, people really need to start realizing that I'm my own person, you know? Because it's like, it's like this weird, it's this weird place that I'm in right now where it's like, they'll tell like they'll start say they'll bring my parents into my stuff but at the same time they've always brought me into my parents stuff you know it's like you can't like you can't there's like a do du- it's like a dual ended thing because people you know people who like don't particularly like my dad politically for example will already have so many like assumptions about me and they'll come in and they'll be like oh but your dad is like this but then at the same time they'll tell me that because of this whole ihako situation they'll be like oh well you're dragging your mom's name like through the or like you're dragging your dad's name through the mud and it's like i'm not doing any of this like we're not how do i put it how do i put it this way i don't speak for my parents and they don't speak for me like a lot of the times obviously because we're family like our interests will align and our like our end goals and objectives will like inevitably align because I feel like we we share the same values and we share the same morals. I mean, that's what makes a family, right? And like, we're all tied together because we love each other. But at the same time, you know, people need to start recognizing that I might be young, but I'm still, I'm an adult. I'm 19, you know, and I have my own, that's the thing. It's like, I'm, it's vice versa, right? Like, I don't, the stuff that I say doesn't necessarily reflect the way that they think and the stuff that they say doesn't necessarily reflect what I think. I mean, it, it just yeah. seems like um, your values, like you said, do align with your parents and especially with your dad. Yeah. But is there something that you don't agree on? Uh, there's a lot of things actually we don't agree on. Actually, um, I probably fight with my dad more than anyone else, <laughs> which is funny. And I know, that, I know that people don't. Yeah, yeah, I really do. And it's like people don't people don't see that. You know what I mean? People don't like really process that because they think like, you know, but like, I think that's what it, that's where it comes from, because the thing is, you have to understand as their kid, therefore, everything I am is them, right? So it's like, I think a lot of people saw that especially because a lot of the time it was like, oh, you're Kiko's daughter whenever I would say something bold. And then my mom came out and this happened. And now they're like, oh, you know, it's kind of like I got, my mom likes to say that I got her heart, but I got my dad's brain. Not to say that my mom is stupid. It's just that I think of, like, my mom is like the smartest person I know, honestly. My mom is scary. But it's like, the way that I think is very much like my dad and the way that I feel is very much like my mom. And I think that... It's like you have a, an yeah. activist heart. Because, you know, your, your dad was an activist when he was in college. Um, and what you're doing right now online, I would describe is uh, activism, you know? Yeah. The thing is, I don't want to invalidate people also who've been devoting, like, their whole lives to this. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, in a way, I guess I've devoted my whole life to my own principles, but I've never really devoted it to any particular movement. And there are people who've like really worked so hard and like, you know, who are really activists and they work so, and I look up to them so much. And to me, I guess that's, that's what it is. Like in my heart, I'm just always going to fight for what I believe is right. 
I'm not, you know, to me, it's like a matter, like I said, it's a matter of principle. It's not a matter of politics. Like, I don't really care about your politics as long as what you like. It's it's just what I see as right and wrong. You know what I mean? It's like, I'll call things out. I'll hold people accountable. Like, per, like for my own, like as much as I can personally as a single person. <laughs> like, But um, I think that, yeah, people, in, yeah, a lot, it's, I guess it's hard also because I get, you know, obviously my dad's a leader of the opposition, so I can't really like say I have no political alliances. But the truth is, I don't have any affiliations. It's like, you know what I mean? I'm not even indebted to my father. I'm not like, you know, it's not like he makes me agree with him. It's not like he makes me like all these things. A lot of people think that we have like ongoing conversations about issues and things. But the truth is, even when I was, what, what is that, 13, 12, 13, when the Nepalis case was coming out, I would check the newspaper, like, every single day to see if my dad's name was there. Because I was scared. I was like, you know, is my dad corrupt? Like, is what's happening, Deba? And, like, thankfully, never came well, up. Even at, yeah, even at that age, you were so incredibly aware of what was happening around you. And just the other day, you tweeted notes from when you were 11. Yeah. Notes from when, when you were at the uh, impeachment trial of uh, former Chief Justice Renato Corona. Yeah. yeah. Should I should I quote from uh, from those notes? Please do, please do. Oh my god. I mean, it's actually quite funny, you know. Um, uh, I mean, it, it, you know, it's like seven pages, I think, or eight pages. But um, you were mentioning that the senators appeared to prefer Starbucks coffee. Yeah, I mean that, <laughs> that's a really good observation. <laughs> I think I was just the, that's the thing. Like my mind was always kind of like obviously I was engrossed in like the in in the actual like depth of it. Like I was there, I was listening, you know. But at the same time, I think I found something oddly poetic in like pointing out the details. That I, I remember, I I have a vague memory of me writing things down and being like well, no one will have known this. Like you know, because I think I kind of wanted to like mark that in my memory as something that like kids don't really get to get to experience and I think in a way that that's that's exactly what my privilege has gotten me also like you know a lot of people will argue that I don't understand things because of my privilege and I understand and like that's true like there's a lot of experiences that I, I will never have or like that I've never had because I'm not I, I'm you know I'm not massa like I'm privileged obviously given who my parents are and like my position but the truth is that that privilege in itself also gave me this education it gave me that kind of education that's like never going to be replicated again you know like I, I can't name another 11 year old who was there that day like sitting there like with me like taking down notes you know and it's like that's it's something to it's something that inspires me but also something that I kind of like feel this weird responsibility like I don't want to be a waste of that privilege I don't want to be a waste of those experiences I, you know, I, I covered that impeachment trial. Uh, I don't oh remember God. I many notes. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's really so fun. funny. I, you know what? I mean, it's really admirable for uh, an 11 year old, you know, to have all these notes. I mean, it's not just about Starbucks, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot there of, there's was, a lot of, there, yeah, the, the there's a lot of depth in these notes. Yeah, I got tired towards the end, if you notice. I was just like, I just listed down their votes. I wasn't going to do like individual commentary because <laughs> I just wanted to listen. But that's the thing. Like, no, but you've um, always my, been this yeah. way. Sorry? You, you've always been this way, you know, aware of your surroundings. Yeah. I, think and... in a, I think in a weird kind of way. Like, I was the only one among my siblings who was there at the trial. And it's, you know, I was because I asked. I specifically asked to be there. And I would spend my time, I would spend a lot of my time either in ABS-CBN with mom or at the Senate with dad. Like, I would be, like, in between, you know, because I wanted to learn about that stuff. Because I think that's when I, that's, it's around that age that I started to realize, especially with my dad leaving, like, his transcripts around, you know. And, like, to this day, like, he'll leave them around and I'll read them and I'll pick them up. Because I, you know, again, I put, like, I kind of realized that's an education in itself. And if I don't take advantage of that, and if I don't, like, try my best to, like, learn and, like, immerse myself in that, then that's just, you know, that's a waste. It's truly a waste. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how, how far are you willing to take this advocacy, this hashtag, Ihako? Yeah. I mean, uh, you're already tweeting uh, stories of other people, stories of uh, victims, you know, real victims of rape. And, yeah. you know, in and, and that way, you're, you're already helping them, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think that... My priority right now is to highlight those stories as they're coming because it's still very fresh. You know, I don't want to like make like a brand or something like that. Like a lot of people were trying to be like make Ihako merch. And I was like, that's so insensitive at this time. I was like, why would I capitalize off of like a movement that I didn't even like I, I, I gave it the wording. I gave it its phrasing, but it's really the women's stories. It's women, like people's stories that really like catapulted that 
people that wouldn't have gotten anywhere near that if it wasn't for them, right, and their stories. And, you know, that's that takes such strength and bravery. So I kind of want to highlight that first for now. But um, I've been trying to think also, I'm brainstorming also on the best possible ways that I can help. Because the truth is, yeah, I'm, again, people need to realize, like, I'm my own person. Like, I still obviously live with my parents. I'm still 19. I'm still in college. But the truth is that everything that I do, I tend to do um, as in, like, independently, like, with a little help. But it's not like, you know, it's not like I have... I don't even have like a, a a fixed job yet. Like I'm a singer songwriter, like sure, but it's like I haven't really been making money from that yet. You know what I mean? I'm only really starting to work now, and it's like I think that I'm just trying to evaluate my options and trying to see like which option would like be best for not for for like everyone I'm trying to help, while also like taking into consideration like my resources and like what I can do personally. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm. So would but, you take it off? Like it's, I mean, from online to offline, is that something that you would consider doing? Yeah, definitely. I think that I want to, you know, I'm thinking of trying to, like, kind of, I'm thinking of ways that we can incorporate, like, these, we can incorporate, like, the end rape culture conversation into, like, actual education. And, um, mm. yeah, I get, it, it's, taking, it's taking a lot of thinking and a lot of time, and it, it'll probably only really kick off once I'm older and I have, like, you know, the resources and the experience to be able to manage something like that, a project is that scale. But I think that, like, I do want to make lasting change. Like, I don't, I'm not going to let the conversation die out, in other words. And I know that there are a lot of people who are still sharing their stories and still sharing their struggles. And uh, I'm just saying that I'm going to continue to do my part in that. And I'm going to continue to, like, to push it forward. Yeah. So you're saying you're not going to get tired of it. Um, and actually, you um, you had commented on uh, something that President Duterte said just uh, just yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not I'm not really clear what your stand is because um, you had uh, two tweets about it or four <laughs> tweets. Um, yeah. But um, President Duterte uh, did say that uh, we should end the in so many words. You know, he said that we should be, not tolerate the culture of uh, victim mm-hmm. blaming. Um, which is obviously what your stand is uh, with regard mm-hmm. to the yeah. issue of, of rape. Um, but I think you said that you're you're not so sure how to react to his statement. Yeah, I think I think I'm still I'm still kind of mulling it over because the truth is that he's shown us a track record of exact doing exactly the opposite. You know, he's shown us a track record, a continued track record of making rape jokes and making like like you know furthering the rape discussion, and it's like like normalizing it you know and it's like for a leader for our leader to be normalized to have normalized that discussion several instances in the past and for several you know for several years i i just i just think it's quite it took me by surprise to read that because i was kind of like huh like (laughs) you know it's kind of like you you wish that i I wish that he had the self-awareness then like if he truly believes that if he truly believes that then i think that like an apology would not go amiss for like all of his previous statements but of course like you know as again i'm just a little girl i'm not like demanding anything of the president i don't expect anything from him i hardly expected a statement at all you know it's not like i didn't think that he would involve he would get involved in the discussion at all so that's why i guess i said you know i pre- like i prefaced that early my first tweet i think with like the whole it's it's hypocritical like given the track record but then like i concluded it with a thank you but then i took that back also cuz i was like okay wait because I know that he's admitted the rape before, and I know that he's admitted the um, and you know and aside from that, like even if even if people will like find excuses for that, which I don't, I I'm not sure how you can find excuses for that. Like he's also just numerous times on the public sphere, like reiterated how like rape is unavoidable because there's like so many beautiful women and like how you know so many insensitive comments also about shooting women, yeah, and you know things like that. And I just felt like. Like, literally, you can Google it. There's so many. Like, I was so, you know, it's overwhelming. Like, you'd think that there there was, like, one snide remark. Oh, it's repeated behavior. And the thing about repeated behavior is it shows a pattern, right? It shows a pattern of, like, what you actually, like, it it can't be just a joke, therefore, anymore. Like, I think that that's just, like, inside. And so that, that repetitive, like, normalizing of that culture and the repetitive kind of pushing of that narrative is not acceptable to me. But at the same time, I kind of want to take this statement for the value that I believe it still has while he holds office, you know, like as a president, that statement still has some sort of value, regardless of how hypocritical he might be as a figure. He's still our 
he's still our head of state. And I think that that given that given his position and given the honor that I know the president of the, of the Philippines deserves and has, I just hope that he can like he, he continues to show us examples of this as opposed to his past, you know. And yeah. OK, I'm going to I'm going to use that to segue into uh, uh, a segment that we don't do here, really. But the uh, spirit <laughs> of this show uh, wanted me to do. <laughs> he said, said an, an iteration of Tito Boyabunda's uh, fast talk. Fast talk. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, on, but on current events and social issues. Yeah? 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 yeah. So maybe, um, I, I don't know, give it a minute each uh, for, okay. <laughs> for each topic. Yeah? Sure, 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 sure. Um, and some yeah. of these topics actually you've already tweeted about. So, mm-hmm. uh, okay, anti-terror bill. Okay, so with an administration that has a track record of abuse already, of abusing our laws as they stand and stuff like that, g- giving them a law that would therefore like enable like further abuse, I think is just it's just wrong. The truth is that I'm not against a terror bill. I'm just against this bill. And I don't think that, you know, it's like we need a terror bill. Like, that's true. But do we need right now? this pandemic i just feel like again it's the priorities that are kind of convoluted you know what i mean and we do need a terror bill that kind of addresses all of our concerns against terrorism because terrorism is a horrible thing but the truth is that given the track record as i said of that abuse it could very very easily be used against people against opposition people against people who would just like um who express dissent against the government and so i just think that you know it's not necessarily throw away any terror bill period it's just can we rewrite this one, please? And I think this one needs to be vetoed immediately. Okay, rewriting. How about changing the name of uh, Nino Aquino International Airport <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> they, they've they already uh, made an acronym out of it, to Papa, Papa P. Papa P, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that, I tweeted already yesterday about this, but I think that you don't even have to support the Aquinos, you don't have to like the Aquinos to admit that Naming, renaming an airport is the last thing we need to be worrying about right now. You know, given the pandemic, given how we've handled this pandemic, I feel like efforts could be, you know, efforts could be redirected towards there. Like we need to, we need to, we need to address this head on. It's a, it's a global pandemic, and we literally, I think thirty four thousand number, thirty four thousand cases number tayo, and we haven't even mass tested. Yeah, right? yeah, I think it's already at thirty four thousand. Yeah, and there's been no mass testing. The truth is also in the Bayanian Hilas One Act, we gave him. Um, special powers, precisely like given that he that that mass testing would be carried out, and given all of these provisions, right, like that um, frontliners would be properly compensated. None of which happened, and you know that's already expired. The Bayanian Hilas One Act has expired. Ninety days have passed, and I just think that renaming an airport is not the priority right now. It's not even about about getting political. You know, I think that we can all acknowledge that is not the number one priority right now for Filipinos. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you about the government handling of the pandemic, but you already answered that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who in one? Okay. Um, how about the, the plight of uh, jeepney drivers that's been in the news lately as well? Um, and in connection with that uh, jeepney modernization program, or yeah. some would say jeepney face out. Okay, to be honest, I, I just started reading on that this morning. So, like, I can't give you, like, that comprehensive an answer, but I can tell you that I stand with the jeepney drivers. And I think that our jeepney drivers are so essential to, like, it's it's not only a backbone of our culture, but it's a backbone of, like, our transport, you know, our transportation and, like, our, it's, it's, the jeepney is so exclusively Filipino that I'm here, like, these people, like, are so, are such a big part of our identity and they're such a big part of our lives. You know, they take it. It's like um, public transportation is such a big part of everybody's lives. And I know that there are some people also in the administration who would uh, deny that or who would like try to refute that. But I like you have to acknowledge public transportation is essential. And I think that they're, if they're not getting properly compensated, if they're not getting their rights, that's just unfair. Mm-hmm. OK, West Philippine Sea. Ah, uh. It's ours. <laughs> it's ours. I think that. Inevitably, like, because there's so many countries that are involved in it, right? Like, I, you know, but I think that the primary, like, the primary kind of, not I'm an antagonist. No, yeah, antagonist. I think that the primary threat would be China. Um, I just don't like, I particularly don't like how hostile those relations have become. Like, how, you know, like when the the fishermen, right? How how long ago was that? I forget their names. I'm so sorry. 
but yeah the fishermen who were um yeah literally like driven out like by military by chinese military and i'm like that's not oh, that's that incredible okay. so, yeah, yeah, there have yeah. been many incidents there there have been many incidents actually Sorry. last year was the yeah, fishermen yeah, who so got many yeah yeah exactly and there's so like that's the thing though it's like you know it's repeated again it's repeated hostile behavior and i just think that that's not uh honestly it, it really scares me because i feel like tension like rising tensions have to go somewhere right like tension doesn't just rise and then fizzle out like there's always a climax and i'm i fear a climax and i'm just uh yeah but i think it's ours and i think that even like even if you don't think it's ours you know like hostile hostile actions like that are not like shouldn't be tolerated again and i just yeah it's just not right mm -hmm. okay uh, how about the arrest that happened yesterday uh during the pride march in manila oh there pride is a pride is also a protest oh maybe um, you know maybe the the uh, 60,000 arrests that have already happened during this lockdown yeah. there's so many right and i think that um a lot of them were a lot of like i think that what irked me particularly about the pride protest arrests is that there's literally videos of them asking like why like why are we being arrested right like there's like there was like a f iphone camera video of someone just being like bakit po silang inaaresto like why like why is this happening now and they couldn't give an answer they couldn't give a concrete answer and i think i think that's also like relating to the anti terror bill right like that's also my concern it's that now we're already having like unconstitutional arrests we're already having like arrests beyond the law like now as it stands and then you give them an a terror bill like you give them a bill that would make that legal like you know what i mean you could literally arrest anyone and say that the terrorist and it's like you you enable them further like these cases would only rise up and also gay rights i think <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a few more. I hope you're you're up for it. Um, mm -hmm. War on drugs. Yes, go ahead. Drink ah. your water. <laughs> okay, war on drugs. Sorry, I think that the war on drugs is also a failure. I think that the war on drugs, um, war a war a war on drugs is essential. Okay, that's essential. You know what I mean? Drugs are illegal. Like fine, but the way that this administration has a uh, handled this, you can't see. That's the thing to me. I think it's like you can't excuse thirty thousand dead. Sorry, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. <coughs> I was talking so fast. My bad for making you talk so much. No, 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 don't <laughs> worry, don't worry, that's me. Um, but I think that's my point, right? It's like you can't excuse thirty thousand deaths that are extrajudicial, and I think that fundamentally that's where that's where also my attitude against this administration comes from because it's like, you know, it's just where do you stand in the face of mass murder? My dad says that a lot. It's like where do you stand? You know, are you for mass murder? Yeah, it, and I think it's a. No, and, well, are you? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> so it's like see, it's it's very simple. It's very fundamental. Like I think that's the truth about all these issues. At the very core of it is a very fundamental value. You just have to read enough to like find it. And it's like, you know, you just have to ask. Like for so many of these things, it's like anti-terror bill. It's like, well, are you, you know, are you for like, like freedom of speech and like freedom of like dissent and things like that, or are you not? And it's like you know, for China also, are you for hostility or like anti-hostility? It's it it comes down to very fundamental things a lot of the time, and I think that's where I find my, like, my opinions on it. Also, that's where I found my opinion. Okay, well maybe I'll ask you a couple more, but um, outside the Philippines this time. Okay. Um, but you lived or live or, I mean, I'm not yeah. sure you live in New York. <laughs> kind of You're here now, but <laughs> but you do go to school in New York. So um, you, you actually might be more aware than many of us about what's happening there. So uh, Black Lives Matter, um, and maybe you know, in a more general sense, racism. Yeah, um, the truth is that racism and prejudices are always going to be ingrained in us. It's always kind of like a it's a cultural bias, you know. Filipinos are also very racist. That's the truth of it. But yeah, I am for the Black Lives Matter movement, and I think that a lot of Filipinos here are like concerned. They're trying to be like, "All lives matter" and things like that. And I know that that's different. Like, it's different from like. It's very different if a Filipino says "All lives matter" versus if like a white person in America were to say "All lives matter" amidst the Black Lives Matter movement. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like if a white person were to say that, then it's just like it's just um what's this? Then it's just incredibly insensitive of like the highest degree. But I also know that a lot of Filipinos don't really get like the nuances of the movement. And so, for Filipinos to be all lives matter, I just kind of want to sit everyone down and um, be like, no. The point is that 
all lives matter yes but they can't it, it can't be all lives until black lives matter like until black lives do and i think that like you know it, it it there was this really great analogy where someone was saying like let's say there's like a bunch of houses in a village right in, in like a singular street and someone's house is on and then you know they go to like their neighbor and they're like hey can i borrow a hose because my house is on fire and their neighbor is like but my house matters too you know and then but they're like no but the point is my house is on fire it's like that one house is on fire the fire truck isn't gonna come and like put like pour water over everybody's houses just so it's equal because that house is the one that's on fire and i think that george's george floyd's death um very very uncalled for very disgusting and i i feel so sorry but for his family and for his daughter especially and yeah there definitely has to be changed there has to be again it's a it's a cultural thing right we're going thankfully we're growing up in a much more globalized world now i think like people might thanks to the internet thanks to the digital age we're more connected now like than ever and i think that that that's something that will help us to push this conversation forward and to eventually eradicate racism and prejudice hopefully right Okay, finally, Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like honestly, I'm just kind of like the <laughs> <laughs> There's there's not enough there, there aren't enough words. <laughs> like it, it's like every day there's something new with that guy. You know what I mean? Like I can't even come up with one coherent thought because there's so many things that I would have to address. But it's like ay ay ay. I just I mean yeah, I, I think that just, says a lot already. Uh, yeah, that says a lot already. There's, like right every day there's just something new and it's kind of like is this real? Like is this real? <laughs> like I said yeah. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But um <laughs> can, can I just add one more topic and maybe this is also yeah, sure. uh, too general a topic but uh you know 2022 in the Philippines. The next oh, election. Wow. I'm not running. I don't know. Like, I don't know. A lot of people were trying to be like run for something and I was like no. <laughs> like I think someone yesterday asked me like, "Oh my god, are you going to be the future president?" and I was like, "No." With like a heart because I just <laughs> politics are dark, man. Politics are so multifaceted. Like people don't really realize that that how like how deep like that stuff really goes. How deep like the you know, it's there's a lot of like favors, there's a lot of like side stuff that no one really like the public eye doesn't really get to see often because a lot of that happens under the table. And it's like, you know, I'm thankful to have my dad to look up to who's like never who's he's literally the most the moral standards in this house are too high. And I just can't like like he's never once made like a a mistake. I remember being 7 and asking him, "Dad, like did you ever do anything that you regret?" And like he just straight up looks at me cold hard stare and goes, "No." And I was like, you know shaken to my core like oh that's great but like it's true every single even his mistakes like when we ask him or like when he'll make me cuento over like wine you know like we have those conversations a lot like after dinner wine night like just me and dad because i'm his only drinking buddy in the house it's like when you we have this conversation you can't drink in the state <laughs> yeah i know that's why it was so stressful i was legal in the here and then i went there and it was like oh my god yeah but like that's the thing it's like it's so I know the states honestly also I, there's so many things about the states are weird no I think I was going to tell you I, I was going to tell you Kanina about also my realizations on that whole thing but like yeah I think 2022 um everyone just has to register to vote I heard that um 10 million people my age around my age group like didn't vote last time and or like weren't registered to vote and I think that given you know you know like coming from for example like in the states like po- the popular vote is very different from like the like it, it can oftentimes be like the outcome of the popular vote is different from yeah. the outcome of like the electoral yeah. college right electoral college. and i think that yeah. yeah exactly and like that's weird and i'm like here your vote really counts like there's no like layers you know what i mean like here your vote is one like that's that's that that's counted and then the majority wins so i think it's a step and so for us to realize that like democracy is sacred and our democracy is so precious and it's so valuable and it's such a it's such a great right to have like to be able to like go there and say like i made a choice that for the betterment of my country and my people or like for you know i made a personal choice and i think that voting is very important and yeah i'm going to encourage a bunch of kids to then i mean obviously you said you look up to your dad you look up to your mom mm-hmm. well for sure um mm-hmm. but among young filipino leaders that you see now who do you yeah. look up to? um Vicky Cosoto. I think he's I I know that that's like a local like a local thing, right? And I think that a lot of local government leaders are very 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 good at their jobs. But the truth and I I heard I think he said though that he doesn't want to do national level 
um, he doesn't want to do national level office. And I understand that. I get that. Wow. But at the same time, I feel like given what he's been able to do on such a in such a short span of time, huh? it's only been what a, a year. Like I think, given like what he's already accomplished as Pase, uh, pa- yeah, Pase, Pasigs, Pasig. I'm so confused. Yeah. I, I consistently here as, as you know the change is like already like it's palpable you know you can feel it like even online like just reading about it online like I could feel it there's like hope and I think that um there are a lot of up-and-coming young leaders also who like and that's the thing about leaders honestly you don't I think that good leaders are the ones who you don't hear about until until like after a long time you know because they're very focused on their work they're very focused on what they do they don't do things for show you know, they don't do things to be pasikat or to be, like, loud. Like, what they do is, like, change, like the changes that they can make and the changes that they can that they can allow to, like, develop. Like, that's what they focus on. And I think that that's what's key for any, like, great leader. And I can't wait to see, like, the next generation, you know, of, like, leaders come up. Okay, well, we've been going for uh, 45 minutes now, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to get mm-hmm. questions. I, I wanted to get questions from our audience, but I, yeah. I don't think we have time. But I do want to ask you one last question because you, you did say that uh, for now you don't have plans to go into politics. So, I mean, yeah. what are your plans? How do you <laughs> I'm writing future? an album. I think, no, that's the thing. A couple of uh, years, a couple of weeks ago, I was very apprehensive and I was kind of lying in bed and I was kind of feeling very insecure because I was like, do I have to run for public office now in order to have a valid opinion? Like in order to like, pull through on all of my you know what I mean on everything that's happened like would I am I being expected to run for public office and like a lot of like the commentary that I get it it seems that people expect me to run for public office but the truth is that I think I can better I can be a better example of like the truth is that we shouldn't how do I put this there's a lot of like you'll notice also it's a trend on like the social medias of a lot of um Filipinos who are quite like influential and like when they do like good things like the first immediate response is you should run for president or you should do this or you should do that and the truth is no because fundamentally these are people that I think everyone like it it, like it proves to people that like Filipinos are more than you know like the Filipinos can care for their country beyond like being in public office and beyond like being in service and I think that me um like as I because I was kind of thinking because art is my number one passion um writing and music is my number one passion always I literally can't sleep at night because I'm writing nonstop, and I think that for me to suddenly doubt myself and for me to suddenly like invalidate that and think that that's not enough in turn I was also invalidating all Filipino artists who are my age you know who are just up and coming and probably already thinking like oh what I'm doing isn't enough or what I'm doing like no like the truth is that you like stick to what you do stick to what you do well stick to your passions if you can and I know that following your dream is also a privilege in itself but the truth is that if you can and if you're able to you should because only you can make only you can make the differences that you can make and I think yeah I mean you're only 19 and you still have to go back yeah. to school right? yeah I do have to go back to school but that's the thing it's so stressful because it's like I don't know if I'm going to be able to go back to school for like another year, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's kind of like I could do online school, but it's like not really worth it. And then the online school, I would have to wake up in the middle of, I'd have to wake up like 3 a.m., you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, right. hello. Well, that's right, because uh, the 12 hour difference. Yeah, the time difference. So that's why I'm really going to have to postpone. But that's why I'm, I'm able to work on my music now. And I, I'm so excited. Actually, tomorrow I'm going to finally um, start work on my next single and stuff, like formally. And Wow. Yeah. I've oh, written what? like 40 songs. Yeah, I've written, yeah, yeah, I've written like 40 songs. I've been hearing your music. I've already heard some of your music, by the way. Oh, thank um, you. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw it, one of those videos that you posted on Instagram where, you know, you were playing the guitar and singing somewhere in New York City and then suddenly there's this siren. The siren, yeah, yeah. Forbes face, yeah, that was my <laughs> That was blaring, you know. <laughs> I was so annoyed. I was like, why do you really have to get, someone really had to get arrested while I was singing my favorite song, but it's fine. <laughs> it's cute. Yeah, I think that uh, with this right now, so yeah, right now that's my focus because quarantine has been nuts. Like I'm sure, like it's a it's a privilege to be able to have been able again to like self quarant like self isolate to this extent, right? It's like people don't really get to do that, but at the same time, I've been going crazy, and you can't deny that. And I've written like forty <laughs> songs, so I'm really excited. Forty, like, wow! Yeah, wow, I'm wow. really excited to share those. Well, we look forward to uh, listening to your music. Thank you. Thank you so much much. for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. This this has been the longest interview. I told you, (laughs) five pages.
<laughs> thank you so much, bro. It means, thank it, it you. means thank a Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you, Frankie Pangilinan, for uh, jo- joining us in this episode of Viewpoint. Of course, thank you so much to our viewers. Do catch us live here on NYK's Facebook page every Saturday at 6 p.m. My name is Barnaby Lowe, and this is Viewpoint. Now you know. <laughs>